Hello and welcome back once again to Rage Gaming. My name is Hollow and today we're taking a deeper look at the upcoming adventure horror game, The Lost Wild. This is a very special looking dinosaur game with some really impressive atmosphere, some stunning visuals and some very lifelike dinosaurs to experience. Sure, we're definitely going to experience the scary side of dinos in this game, but the awe and majesty of many too, the detail, the behavior. Not only does this game have a look going for it visually and thematically, it seems very promising as just a game which you can't actually say for many dino games these days. Inspired by alien isolation and dino crisis, this horror adventure has us learning the mystery of a destroyed Japanese island that has been overrun by dinos in the current day and age. And after I talked about it recently in the upcoming games from Monster Hunter fans video, well clearly people were excited and seemed interested to learn more about this one. So I'm here today to take a deeper dive on everything we currently know about the Lost Wild, so let's get into it. The source of the information we're talking about today comes from the official teaser trailer and the official website which gives us lots of information. So what is The Lost Wild? The Lost Wild, as described by the website, is a first person survival horror game with a simple goal of overcoming nature's most formidable forms of life dinosaurs. Meant as an immersive and cinematic dinosaur game that aims to capture both the reverence and of course terror of dinos. From our brief look through that trailer or the screenshots from the website, I'd say they've done a pretty good job. Whether it's the stegosaurus that are just chilling or the raptors that are hunting you at night, they feel like they've hit the nail on the head here. For me though, that's the core of any good dino game. An important mix of appreciation for the many species of dino and then of course exciting interaction with them. That could just be, say, hanging out with herbivores, or of course, screaming in terror while I run from a carnivore. While this trailer definitely leans more into the screaming and running aspects, we do see a bit of serene aspect. Like the repeating shot on the website where the player is paddling down a river in a boat and these stegosaurus are kind of just chilling, minding their own business. And when we consider the setting for the game, there's actually a lot of opportunity for this type of stuff. We play as Saskia, an investigative reporter who finds herself stranded and alone on this island in Japan. Dinosaurs are roaming the land with no real remains of functioning human society. This, as far as we can tell, is caused by a mysterious temporal event which is hinted throughout the trailer that seems to have maybe brought dinosaurs to this place in our current timeline. However, we're actually not completely alone as there is a voice that's going to speak to us through a radio. Whoever is on the other end is going to help us navigate through this destroyed facility and try to find a way to escape, leading us to various dramatic points in the story and of course building up information about the island, about the dinosaurs and what actually caused all of this to happen. Then the website claims that we're going to have an impactful dilemma at the conclusion. So we're going to have a choice that will actually have real important changes that result in a different ending to the story. It actually reminds me of Firewatch in a way if you've played that game, uh, where you would explore and follow a mystery while also being directed in many ways by a voice on a radio. Apparently there is some inspiration from Firewatch here and I guess that makes sense. So that's the setup and setting for the game. Visually I think it's impressive and I also think the atmosphere is spot on and there's also quite an intriguing storyline. So it's all very strong so far but what about the gameplay? Well, we're meant to explore the Japanese research facility in this wilderness while interacting and of course avoiding dinosaurs where needed. To survive, we're going to have to scavenge the facilities for important items like the flare gun, the torch or other materials that will help us create contraptions to help us further. They're quite vague about what these contraptions will be, but we can make some assumptions. But in any case, with the help of these tools, we'll try to avoid, distract, intimidate or of course hide from the dinos while making our way through the island. As described on the website, there is a risk versus reward system in place. See, the longer you're out there, the more danger you're going to find yourself in as you risk more and more encounters that, hey, you might not survive. But in turn, you're going to discover more about the island, progress the story and of course work towards your escape. You can't just sit there and hide forever. So I'm not sure if that definitely means there's a hub that we're going to return to or maybe areas we choose to go between or we can go one way or another way any one time, but it does seem to hint of some kind of system of that nature. When it comes to the dinosaur encounters, however, we will mostly be unable to fight them directly in any lethal way. We don't have guns or melee weapons. We're just a normal, 
reporter lady who's trying not to die. She's not like a soldier or a warrior. So instead we use evasion, distraction, intimidation, and stealth. Apparently we're gonna have very little chance of outrunning a dino if spotted. So you're gonna have to react really quickly, hiding in places that give you some kind of protection, which we see say of the player hiding in a vehicle or a hollowed out tree. And we'll use items to maybe distract the dinos and make a quick and quiet getaway. Maybe we'll use intimidation in some cases like using fire to scare smaller scale dinos or traps that might explode or slow them down. But we're actually warned that the dinos aren't stupid. They're gonna adapt and learn. Methods that work before won't work forever. And that's one of the most exciting parts for me, the dinosaur behavior. The website tells us they've created an AI that feels realistic. Instead of simple repetitive mechanics they just follow, there's something they use called self-preservation and reactive systemic AI behavior. To me, that sounds like the dinos will avoid walking into obvious things that will hurt them. They'll avoid you if you find a way to hurt them, or if you use something that distracts them, but then they go on to learn, hey, this wasn't really a fret, but a ruse. Well, then maybe it won't work as well the next time. So through these mechanics, the website claims the game actually has good replayability through the novel take on combat and evasion mechanics, that the experience will actually be different the second time from the first time. It sounds very promising, it looks cool in the trailer, so hopefully it's not too good to be true and does work as described. Now let's talk about the extra details that people were asking for when we had our brief look at the game beforehand. The Lost Wild is releasing originally for PC on Steam, the Epic Game Store, and GOG. Fortunately, they've answered the obvious follow-up question, which is if this game will come to console. Yes, it is coming to console after the initial PC release for next gen at some point. The release date for Lost Wild is still a far away one. They are not giving us any specific windows because they know they've got a lot to work on. What we saw in this trailer, they claim, is from their current playable pre-alpha gameplay. They expect a dev period of two to three years. While some of that period may have already occurred, it is certainly not going to be something we see in 2022, basically. They say the playtime for the game is going to be something like six to ten hours long as a single player story experience, but as referenced, they think it's going to be a good game to replay based on the AI mechanics and of course the story itself which has at least two endings. Finally, The Lost Wild is fully funded by personal investment, an epic mega grant, and other investors. So they have no plans for, say, a Kickstarter, because this project is already on solid foundations. But for now, that is everything I've been able to learn about The Lost Wild, a very exciting and promising concept that was looking pretty damn polished in a pre-alpha state. I think this is a great concept, a mix of beauty and horror that is dinosaurs with an intriguing setup and setting. Plus the fact that it's fully funded already and they have a timeline that they're not planning on sharing with us suggests that we won't see delays or hopefully as much dev crunch time. It's a really good thing. To me, this feels like they have a clear vision and they're producing it in a healthy and smart way. So to say the least, I'm excited to learn more about it and I'm sure I'll be back with another video when there's something new and major to share. So look forward to that. But do let me know your thoughts on The Lost Wild. If you'd like to see more of this type of content, give me a like. But until next time, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh. Cotton and hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye